listening to Pipe Bomb Radio with your host, the founder, Felix Olmedo. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour. And the godfather, Nate Milton. Godfather's in the house. You're welcome. Do I have everybody's attention now? Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of Pipe Bomb Radio tonight as we welcome superstar... Uh, Ashley America to the show She'll be calling in here in just a moment uh, We we did have plans On bringing in somebody uh, You know, bringing in a possible WWE Hall of Famer But that did not happen And that's okay And that's okay Because we can save that for another time However, we will bring in uh, She is Ashley America She has been working out of the Ring of Honor camps And been wrestling uh, independent, the independent circuits For quite some time and we'll sit down and chat with her about her her career in professional wrestling as of right now, uh, what her plans are, where she sees herself in the future, and so much more. Not to mention, we'll also be uh, discussing upcoming Money in the Bank predictions, uh, who's going to win the Money in the Bank briefcase, and so much more. Uh, my tag team partners will be joining me here in just a moment. Uh, I know Nate Milton will be calling in, and Jordan Garber, he will be calling in as well. And... In the meantime, we can always get this party started and go on from there. So, without any further ado, I believe our guest of honor is calling in now. So, here we go. Hey, Ashley, is that you? I appreciate that you called me the guest of honor, Brother Fig. That it makes me feel all oh. good inside. My bad, man, my bad. <laughs> I didn't recognize the number because it's actually she's in Virginia, too. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I mean, you make, you All right, no, that's good, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. I don't know what I just did there, but that's okay, though. That's okay. You are special to the team as well, so. How you been doing, man? You been doing all right? Been doing pretty good, brother. Uh, just, uh, you know, enjoying life down here in Virginia. How, how you been, my friend? I've been good. Uh been very busy this past week. Uh, things come up that, that you know, I had to, I had, let's put it this way. I had two graduation ceremonies to go to uh, for my sister. Uh, we had family in over the weekend, so yeah, I was kind of kind of on the go all weekend. So, uh, but I'm not going to delay it any further. I believe. Uh oh. Well, she was calling in. We'll have to we'll have to get her on the way back in. It looked like our guest was calling in from that area code, and I stand corrected. She's not actually from Virginia. She's from Pennsylvania. I looked at the wrong area code. Hello. <laughs> Ah, what a day to start! What a t- what a way to start off the show! My goodness, can I don't know my my time zones, my area codes, and all that good stuff. But um, you know, I have to say though, uh, last last Thursday show, without a doubt, one of the highest listened to shows that we've done in such a long time, actually. You know, we we had so many guests call in. And uh, talk about the upcoming event that they're going to be part of, which was the uh, the Eternal Tranquility Benefit, getting to speak to the likes of Kurt Angle, Lita, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, which, oh, God, that was so much fun to hear him getting character and talk about everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. Jake Roberts, Tatanka, yes. Jimmy Snuka, Hacksaw. We even had Tito call in. But it was definitely a fun, action-packed show, and without a doubt, I did try to pull one of them from the, from the show to be on tonight. That's okay, though. Well, like I said in the beginning, we'll get them for a future date. And, you know, I think our guests may have had trouble calling in, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a call. All so, right, all right. Let me see if that might work, because at, at this point... Let me try something here. Give me just a second. <laughs> you oh, Lord have phone. mercy. You know these phone lines and me, man. I could tell Austin <laughs> all the time. I could. I, I always have fun with them because either they're going to work or they're not. So <laughs> let me see what's going on here. We can get Miss Ashley on the phone here. Hello? Hey, Ashley, this is Felix and my partner, Nate. How you doing? Good. How are you? We are on the air, and I do apologize. I actually was going to bring you on, and somehow, I guess, the number the number came up, went off my switchboard, so I do apologize for that. 
But we got you oh, on. That's We're okay. ready to rock and roll. And we can start off things by asking, of course, at what age did you did you did you get into professional wrestling? Did you enjoy watching it as a young lady uh, growing up? At what age? What, at what age did it catch your eye? I started watching it when I was in high school. I was like seventeen, I think. Oh, okay. So were you were you watching Sarah little... maybe the Attitude Era time? No, uh, later than that. It was like uh, two thousand five, two thousand six. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, now, you, you, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, when, when you're watching at that age, you know, who were some of the characters, who were some of the wrestlers that kind of jumped off the screen and, and, and really captured your attention at that time? Well, um, the first storyline that I remember is DX and the Spirit Squad. So uh, <laughs> I've, I've kind of always been a big Dolph Ziggler fan. Okay. And, uh Yeah. <laughs> No, he's, um, he's a great, he's an entertaining guy, no doubt. Definitely. Well, you know, I wanted and to then, ask uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, at what point did you figure you were you wanted to get into this? You wanted to do, you know, do it for a living and 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 have some fun and get to travel around and and just wrestle. I mean, what what, what was it that kind of pulls you in? Well, it's kind of a a and a typical story. I never really like thought that I would be a wrestler until I was doing it. Um, okay. I went to college to be an art teacher Ooh. and I graduated in 2010 right when the economy crashed. So, uh, of course, art is one of the first things to get cut. So, okay. I didn't get that full-time job that everyone promised me if I went to college. And so um, I would substitute teaching and um, working at a dairy farm and just doing a bunch of other stuff that wasn't really making me happy. And, um, I mean, I tried to do a whole bunch of stuff. I tried to start a nonprofit art gallery, which nice. actually still exists today, but I'm no longer involved with. And, uh, I don't know, just all kinds of stuff and I just didn't really know what I was doing, and okay. um, I I met someone in a bar just randomly by chance, and she was like, hey, do you want to try being a stagehand? And I was like, I don't really know what that is, but all right. And so um, <laughs> I went, and my first gig was tearing down one of those mountain stages, those portable stages. Mm-hmm. at Meriwether Pierce Pavilion, and I was just like, this is awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, I have time to work on my own art or do whatever else, and it's physical. And um, I never really felt like an athlete before then, but I realized that I put on muscle really fast when I was doing that. So, uh, okay. yeah, I was okay. just kind of down still, and people were like, you should try roller derby. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, no, if I'm gonna do anything like that, it's gonna be wrestling. So without really like thinking how far I would take it, just to like learn how to be a wrestler, I signed up at the closest school to my house, which was like five minutes away. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was never really like, oh, I'm going to, like, make a career that I just, like, wanted to do it because I thought it would be cool and make me happy and yeah. help me be a stronger person. Okay. So once you uh, started training at the school, was your impression of wrestling as a fan, did it change once you actually began the process of becoming a wrestler? Absolutely. I mean, it, it totally changes the way that you look at it. I mean, I already – understood that it wasn't really real but just like I can remember just being amazed by how things are actually done and how much teamwork really is involved in wrestling okay and do you re- do you recall what you were, I mean going out for your first match what was going through your mind at that one point in time were you was it was it nerves was it more excitement was it like you know what I'm ready for this I worked hard let's do this um, my first match, I think I was pretty nervous, 
And I remember um, two of my best friends who, uh, they actually, they're actually the ones who got me into wrestling because they had started a backyard wrestling promotion mm-hmm. in high school. <clears throat> and, like, we we still have all of the, the seasons of it. I still have them all on my external hard drive. But uh, <laughs> they both came to watch me, and they had really encouraged me to do it. So, uh I don't know, I was kind of excited to show them what I had learned, even though, like, I really had learned next to nothing about wrestling at that point. But, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I, I still, like, get nervous before my matches, but I've only had um, 19 matches so far. <laughs> hey, good. Well, you're still young. You definitely got a full career ahead of you, no doubt. I hope so. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, just... just having 19 matches under your belt, you know, has there come a point where where you, you say, okay, I might be still at the beginning part of this, but I know what I'm doing now. Like, where was the transition where it became something from, you know, this is something that I aspire to, to this is something that, you know, I might not, you know, be the most experienced person, but I know what I'm doing now. Um, I, I really started to gain a lot of confidence when I, once I went to the Ring of Honor camp. Um, and I got to learn from, you know, Delirious and Jay Lethal and Truth Martini and Adam Cole. They were, like, the, the main players at the camp, and the Briscoes came in. I think Matt Taven showed up. Nice. You know, just getting getting some... Um, well, first of all, <laughs> they they just talked for, like, an hour or two at the beginning of the camp, and I wrote down everything that they said. And then... Um, we started doing the drills and the matches and everything, and they were like, where did you learn how to do that? And I was like, here, <laughs> just now. <laughs> so like, literally I just did everything that they told me to do. And, I mean, I'm still, like, working on refining the technique. But since the camp and since um, training at the dojo with Delirious, I really feel like I'm starting to, like, grasp and feel more confident in the ring. And, like, okay. I can make the move makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And with the with with the current I you know, uh, going thing going around right now with Tough Enough ending its uh search obviously they've chosen their top forty. Would that ever have been something that you would have aspired to try out for maybe a future season maybe to get involved with Tough Enough? I know some people either they like it or they don't, but do you, I mean, considering it's training to be part of you know, get your contract with WWE, would that something be, would that be something of interest to you? Absolutely. I think anything would be a great experience. You know? Okay. Absolutely. And if no, you actually can always had learn the, something. No, no, it's okay. No, you're right. Absolutely. Learning experience. If if there was ever a dream match that you would either mm. you see that as a possibility having or would have liked to have had, who would it be against and why? A dream match. Well, um, Sherry Martell is my favorite. Oh, you just you became my time. favorite now for saying that. I love her to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. So if that could be possible, that would be it. But uh, uh, Sarah Del Rey would be awesome. Uh, Victoria slash Tara or Gil Kim. Ooh, great choices. Yeah. And then um, there's a bunch of really talented girls in the UK, like Kaylee Ray and Nikki Storm. I don't know if you followed them at all, but I think it'd be awesome to work with either of them. I know Soraya Knight, Sweet Soraya. She, she's out there as well, too. Sweet Soraya would be amazing as well. I just listened to her po- podcast with Colt the other day. What a story. She is, she's pretty, she, She's awesome. I think she's one of the... One of the few that don't get the credit that she really deserves. I mean, people look at her, oh, that's Paige's mom. Well, you know what? She's got an established career. She she really is somebody a lot bigger than you think she is. Absolutely. You know? And just like an inspiration as a person, like how many people could go through what she went through and come out on top. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Now, I, I love that you mentioned uh, Sherry Martell as well as uh, Tara Victoria because – those are two of my favorite uh, women's wrestlers of all time, not just because of the in-ring skill, but because they find a way to integrate 
their personality in, into those characters, uh, and they tell a story during the match. And one of the earliest matches I saw with you, I think it was uh, from one of the Valkyrie shows against uh, Nyla. Yes. And I, I thought that was a really good match, you know, just you being uh, so new to the business and, and already having just a personality that came through in the ring, even though it was a very quick match because uh, Nyla is nothing to play with. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, 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 it told a, a, a good little story. So, you know, I, I wonder, you know, as you're learning and progressing, um, what do you think is the more important part of your craft? Is it the storytelling and the character, or is it the actual technical hold or, or both? I mean, you can't really have one without the other, I think. But, like, being able to... Um, do things technically correct is very important, especially for safety reasons. Sure. But uh, I really believe that the way that you connect with the crowd is through emotion and storytelling. Like, if you don't have emotion behind your moves, they don't care. And even if they don't realize that that's why they're interested in the match, you know, that's why they are. <laughs> And that that character, I'm pretty much just acting like Sherry Martell, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, i got to ask, too, you know, in, well, you know, the era of, of the manager is, is a dying breed. It's really not as as visible as it used to be, say, like the 80s and 90s. If If you had the opportunity to work with a manager, do you see your character having a manager? And if so, who would you think would be the perfect fit? To, to escort Ashley America down the aisle. Well, are are you talking about my Valkyrie character or my other one? Uh, either one, either one. We'll shoot for either one. I mean, depending on the, uh, how they're represented in each each scenario, do you think that each one, each each uh, particular? Let me rephrase this. Do you see either one having a manager, and if so, who would that be? Um. I never, I never really thought about being a manager. I'm kind of like a, a do it myself type of gal. So, I mean, okay. if I was ever paired up with one, I'm, it would be fun to work with somebody else. But okay, uh, there's a guy in the area named Andy Weinberg who does a preacher gimmick who I thought might be cool to go with the Valkyrie character, the conservative. Right wing uh, and Coulter. Okay. And that's but, my um, favorite character. For, for my, that's for my, uh, <laughs> sorry, what? I was just saying that that's my favorite character, by the way, just because it's it's like a, a perfect uh, a perfect heel in this day and age. But also, depending on what city you're in, you could be the perfect baby face. <laughs> that's true. Oh yeah. I think it would be a baby face in a lot of places. <laughs> so in yeah, terms my, of, oh, go ahead, go ahead. My baby face character is more of an extension of my actual personality, so it's like a, a new age hippie chick um, Reiki gimmick. Nice. And, yeah. I don't think that would ever really have a manager. Okay. Now, in, in terms of, uh, you know, just kind of looking forward, and, and, you know, obviously you never want to take today for granted, but, you know, obviously, you know, you've had this incredible atypical journey, as you said. Uh, so I, I don't know, if, you know, if, if five years ago you would have seen yourself at this point. So just kind of going forward, where where would you like to see yourself, you know, let's say three or four years from now? Just happy. I mean, I don't know necessarily that I'm going to make it anywhere big in wrestling, but um, just wherever I'll be happiest in life and where I can be the most helpful and the most productive. That's a great answer, definitely. You know, i got to ask, of course, now, too, that with the – with being, you know, with you having uh, – been in a business just a, just a short time, you you still had the opportunity to to work with some great talent and even sit down and maybe chat and pick the brains of some of the vets that that you've got to work with or been in a locker room with. 
if there was some advice that they'd given you that really kind of stuck with you through this whole process, has there? I mean, what, what what would that advice have been? I mean, did they tell you anything in particular to look out for, to try to be, to try to act a certain way? I mean, any kind of advice that you were given so far in the wrestling business? Well, I think the most important and basic advice that I would give to anybody who is new in wrestling is eyes open and mouth shut. So uh, just just take everything in. You don't have to agree with everything that you hear, but just mm-hmm. be respectful of everyone. Take the advice from, from everyone. Use what you like and put the other stuff in your back pocket. And, you know... Um, just always stay positive. Never talk bad about anybody. Just spend your time focusing on yourself and trying to make yourself better. And then, um, yeah. All right. It's it's just yeah. like any job. Like I work in production as well. And if you're quiet and respectful, and you know, just someone that people like to be around, you're gonna go places, even if you're not the best right away. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's good advice, not just for wrestling, but, you know, for life, you know. <laughs> it, it's Absolutely. Of, you know, we, 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 we all could, could talk a little less, listen a little more, uh, care a little more. So, so yeah, that, that's great advice. Yeah. And, you know, just, I mean, to me, I don't see any point in ever trying to hold anyone else back. You know, if you feel like you have to take somebody else out to keep your spot, was it ever really your spot to begin with? You know, just um, help those who are under you and help them learn and grow and protect the business that you care about so much. You know, if somebody wants to learn, help them out. Amen to that. And I wanted to uh, conclude my, with my final question. I know with uh, you have upcoming shows uh, and, and social media that's out there for fans who want to keep up with everything that you're doing. What would be the best way to keep in contact with you? I mean, I believe you have a Facebook, and, and I believe you have a Twitter. Are you in, dipped into pretty much every aspect of social media? Uh, Facebook and Twitter are what I have. I don't really know what else is out there. Um, okay. I have My Facebook is Ashley America. I have a like page, and I'm getting pretty close to my maximum amount of friends, but uh, you can add me on there if you want. And then on Twitter, I am Ashley Murica, spelled <laughs> A S H L E Y M U R I K A, because America wouldn't fit. So <laughs> that's what it yep. is. Okay. And Nate, one did you have any final Twitter questions? handles oh, out there? Sorry. Yeah, I was oh, going to say one of my favorite Twitter handles uh, by any wrestler out <laughs> there. Cause it it fits. Uh, but uh, my final question. <laughs> My final question, I guess, would be, um, you know, we talked about the journey. We talked about, you know, your, your background. If, let's say, the, the Ashley that, that we are speaking to right now, if you could go back and, and talk to Ashley from five years ago or, or, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, what would you say to, to that younger version of yourself in, in terms of maybe some encouragement, maybe some advice? Um, you know, what would you say now with the knowledge that you've gained over the past few years? I would say never let anyone else limit your potential or tell you what to do. Just do what you want to do and trust yourself. That's a great way to sum it up right there. No doubt about that. Ashley, I want to thank you again for um, for taking the time to sit down and chat with us about your career so far. Uh, We definitely would love to have you come back and do a part two in the future and uh, let us know what you're up to at that time. Uh, would you be a po- would you be up for coming back for a round two? I would love that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> we uh, definitely wish you the very best of luck in your career in professional wrestling. You never know. We can actually say that we could be talking to a future a future knockout, future Ring of Honor diva. I don't know if it's diva is a proper term. I think it's just wrestler, Ring of Honor <laughs> wrestler, or we yeah, could say I don't a think WWE they have a superstar. <laughs> Because I, 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 some people just think that when I say diva, they, 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 it's not something they look like to call themselves. Because if you think about Sherry, you think about Mula, you think about uh, think about Molly Holly, T- Tara, just to name a few, Victoria, they were wrestlers. They were wrestlers, but they were beautiful. And they, they, and diva was not the right word. 
like Alita would say, be in that same category as well. These ladies yeah. knew how to wrestle. And I think we can definitely, yeah. you know, to be put in that category, I think you could definitely, you have a lot of potential to be in that same category as well. We wish you the very, very best of luck, and we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. I look forward to coming back. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank have you a good and one. Have a great night. Take care. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All righty, Nate. How you been doing, man? I'm good, brother. That was a fun conversation right there, man. Yeah, she's definitely got a bright future ahead of her. Still young in the career of professional wrestling, so definitely to not put, well, to not put uh, my own little pun into it, she can keep reaching for the stars. She's gonna, she, she's gonna keep going. <laughs> that's for sure. She, now she just needs the uh, the old uh, Felix Lomito reaching for the stars T-shirt, and she's got it made. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't going to say it while we were talking to Ashley, but uh, El Jefe could be her manager. <laughs> Keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> Conspicuous by his absence, though, I do want to say Jordan was not able to join us for the interview tonight. He was running a little bit late, had other things to take care of, but that's okay. Uh, I do want to throw out, first off, number one, to let you guys know who our guest will be next week. I have already confirmed with him. And he is AWA, he is former AWA, former WW, WWF, I guess. Uh, inter- ring inter- I guess the interviewer, announcer, however you want to look at him. Uh, we tried to, I've been working with him, I want to say almost a year. And finally, we've gotten everything out of the way. So we welcome Ken Resnick to the show yes. next week. Kill again. He will be back, and this will be. And I do apologize for for the listeners if they are not able to catch the earlier shows. A lot of our guests, uh, we have to accommodate just to make sure that we they, they're comfortable, and not everybody can make it to our, our normal time. But he will be joining us at this at the same time as we did tonight's show next week to talk about AWA, talk about WWF, what he's up to today, and a lot more. Uh, and that man's got a lot of history to talk about, let me tell you. Yes. Working with Vern you know Gagne, my... working with Vince McMahon, yes. you know. Like, two of my favorite shows, Felix, that a lot of wrestling fans, it might have gone under their radar, but Killer Ken was the announcer for them. He used to announce uh-huh. for the old Ladies Professional Wrestling Association back in the 90s. Okay. Uh, and he, he also used to uh, announce for Roller Jam, you know, the uh, roller derby show on TNN. I did not know that. (laughs) So, yeah, I I can't wait to just talk about the the long-spanning career of uh, one Ken Resnick. Absolutely, absolutely. Next week, special start time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we'll we'll transition over to discussing – well, first off, i I got to stop everything and and congratulate our very own Nate Milton for – Having quite the successful week in interviews, I've been checking out what you've been doing, speaking to one, one half of Crime Time, JTG, also getting the chance to speak to Kenny King, and from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing good things about them. Yeah, yeah, so thank you, congratulations on that to you and your partners, man. Thank you, man. Uh, you know, the uh, JTG uh, interview, that'll be up on the Kings of Sport this Friday, uh, and the interview that I did with uh, Kenny King promoting Destination X uh, this week is going is up right now. Uh, you can find that on the uh, Fight Network and Live Audio Wrestling. So, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's just being in the right place at the right time and getting the opportunity to talk to these people. And, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a week, man. You know, I, I love talking, of course. I love talking wrestling. So, uh, yeah, and any time <laughs> I get to do that, whether it's here with Felix or – on any of my other shows, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a good time. There you go. There you go. Nate was just meant to be in this business. He's been he's he's meant to be on the air, talking the year off, and entertaining, and 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 <laughs> just talking some good old fashioned wrestling, as Ted Turner used to call it, the wrestling show. Yes. Of course, if I had that kind of money, I don't know if I'd call it wrestling. But then again, hey, you know. <laughs> Moving on you to got that uh, kind of money, whatever you want. What's that? Oh yeah, you, you know you, you know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's right. But you know, we've talked about this in the last two weeks. The close, the 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 serious closeness of these pay-per-views, back to back to back to back. 
is I guess their way of making up for it as far as building a storyline. They build them as each story goes on, as each week goes on. And Monday Night Raw, obviously, we saw the continuation of the Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins rivalry. Dean, <laughs> they're, they're given a very good. Uh, I want to say they're comparing him to Steve Austin, but then again, they did the same thing with a few other stars who seemed to be anti authority. And with Seth Rollins kind of running off at the mouth, saying he don't need nobody, he don't need them, he don't need this, he don't need that. Well, mom and daddy kind of left him up on his own. And, (laughs) well, you saw what happened there. And the continuing build in different stories kind of led to, it just seems like a lot of these matches are just thrown together. I really, I really truly believe that, with the exception of maybe a few. Now, the money in the bank, naturally. That was going to be, they chose that, that they're going to build, you know, have the rivalries build between that. The World Heavyweight title match, okay, there's another one. The tag team. Now, that one, I, I, I have to say I am interested to see where they'll go with this because primetime players haven't had much of a push since, since their reunion. And it'll be interesting to see if they'll get the opportunity to hold the straps or will we continue to see New Day continuing to rule. You know, Xavier Woods, he's been quite the entertaining uh, – should I say manager? Should I say competitor, superstar? Either way you want to look at it. He's been entertaining. And getting to see Kofi actually be heel, even though he he doesn't really come off as one, it's about time. Because, you know what, people yeah. have been wanting to see him tweak his character, be a little bit more wicked, be more more evil, if you will. Big E, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with him. Uh, you know what, <laughs> it, extremely talented big man. But I feel like we haven't really seen him at his full potential yet. Yeah. I really, I really don't think we have. But it'll be interesting to see. Now, I wanted to ask, as we uh, talk about Money in the Bank coming uh, coming up, let's not forget about, of course, John Cena and Kevin Owens. That seems to be almost like the one of the top two rivalries so far going into the Money in the Bank pay per view. Overall, what oh, was no your doubt. impression of no Monday doubt. Night Raw? Um, <clears throat> well, let's. Let's start with my favorite segment of Raw, uh, my fa- maybe my favorite two minutes of Raw over the past year, and that was uh, when our truth came out <laughs> and, and oh, set out God. his challenge for, for money in the bank, and Kane's like, you're not even in the match. He's like, oh, oh, I, I, that's my fault, everybody. My bad, New Orleans. My bad, Kane. Like, that was just so funny. So silly, but, like, this guy could be doing a whole lot more than, than he's been doing because, you know, he is a, a talented guy both in the ring and, and especially, you know, doing these little comedy skits. You know, it kind of takes me back to that one, obviously the one that they'll never, ever let him live down, is oh, that yeah, one time he yeah. was in Wisconsin and, and, and <laughs> I think it was Ween, Milwaukee and he called him Green Bay or Green Bay and he called him yeah. Milwaukee or something like that. Yep. And, yep. Yeah. But truth, you know, he does good with the comedy. He does really good because he, he knows how to be funny. He knows how to be entertaining. But at the same time, he can wrestle. Yeah. And and I think it's just, what made it's just that a shame so that funny, they have to make him a filler for matches at times. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what, what made that so funny to me was I actually thought, like, I couldn't remember. Like you said, Felix, a lot of these matches have kind of been put together in the past week or so. So I actually thought truth was in the money in the bank because he was in the elimination chamber. <laughs> yeah, that would make that would make sense. That would make sense. And somebody would say, when you go back to, I believe it was, I want to say 2011, maybe, maybe 2012. I can't remember exactly, but I know it was at the cap, the the, the was it capital punishment, capital. I can't remember yeah. the name of that 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 pay per view that he faced Cena for the title. Was it Cena? Yeah, it had to have been Cena. Yeah. Anyways, he, they didn't give him uh, the chance to win the title. Character. Yeah. What's that? I said that was when he was playing the uh, crazy character, and that was some of his best work because he showed up in uh, yeah. Richmond that one week wearing a Confederate uniform. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know if Vince knew what to make of that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, you know, that, that, funny, that was pretty funny. In in terms of the uh, the pay-per-view coming up, I'd say that, you know, maybe Owen Cena is the main event even over the title match because I think more people 
are interested in seeing that again than Seth and uh, Dean, which I think Seth and Dean is going to be a good match, but it's hard to tell this story so fast. Like you said, you know, every two weeks we're building towards a big event, whereas in the past, you know, you'd have uh, at least a month to get in between and and build these storylines up. So I'm looking forward to seeing it in Owens. Uh, Seth and Dean should be interesting. And then the money in the bank itself. I think those are the three big matches that I'm really interested in. I still say that they need to put money in the bank back in WrestleMania because that yeah. was such a high attraction match. Now that the now that the streak is over, they need something high, some high profile match that's not the main event to, to to keep people interested, which is kind of what they tried to do. They tried it. Okay, uh, they, they tried to do this under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Good concept, just I don't know if it's good enough. And then when they have it on the actual pre-show and not the event, you know, that kind of takes away the, the the level of importance they feel that it could be. Whereas Money in the Bank, it never had to be part of a pre-show, post-show, whatever. It was in the, it, it was in the card. You know, it just, I don't know. They need to, I know they like the idea because they're putting it in its own pay-per-view because it really draws a lot of attention. But it drew more when it was part of the WrestleMania attraction. Just, just my opinion. I can see that, but I think that in this age where you know we don't even really have quote unquote pay per views anymore, and all we have are these network special events, like they're going to spread so much stuff thin. Like I think that they like Elimination Chamber and Money in the Bank are two of the few kind of gimmick pay per views that are gimmick special events that can actually draw eyeballs, so there's no chance of them bringing it back, even though I do think it, it, it should be back at WrestleMania where it started. Of course. Of course. And, you know, let's, let's, let's give a rundown to the card here of Money in the Bank and each, give, each of us give our predictions of who's coming out. Money, 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 money. Isn't that the, the WWE, the, that money song? The money, money, money. <laughs> they actually, I remember they gave that song to Donald Trump when he, when he was at WrestleMania yeah. a few years back, and yeah. he still boasts about it being the highest rated wrestle, or highest watched, or highest buy, or whatever WrestleMania ever, which was pretty awesome to see Vince get his head shaved. That yeah. was that was pretty sweet to be there in, in Detroit for that. <laughs> but let's talk about the card. You know, obviously with the pre-show, we have Truth against King Barrett. Now, unfortunately, there's not there's not anything on the line. It's just it is just a regular match. Who do you see coming out of this match as the winner? You know, uh, I think the uh, the important thing you just said there is that nothing is on the line. So since yeah. nothing is on the line, I could see them giving Truth a win, especially you know after his little comedy bit on Monday. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can agree with you on that one. I can definitely agree with you on that one. I mean, it's sad to say because it seems as though every time they give Barrett something to work with, right. they don't give him the push needed to, 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 to back it up. He's been Intercontinental Champion. He's now the King of the Ring. But most are thinking, okay, so what? And that's a shame because Barrett's talented. He's, he's, a, he's an incredible talent. Just there's nothing there. And they need and to the do something with that. that. That uh, Bad News Barrett character was actually catching on with the people. And then I don't understand why, you know, obviously he's had some injury issues, but, man, this guy should be a bigger deal than, than, than what he is right now. No doubt. No doubt about that. And for the uh, Divas title, we have champion Nikki Bella taking on the original number one contender who won the, the, the match for the title, uh, the title match, excuse me, uh, Paige, but of course she was taken out, and, and Naomi took it. Paige gets her match. She gets her match at the at the, the Money in the Bank pay per view for the Divas Championship. To be honest, I don't really care who wins because I'm, I'm hmm. I, you know what, seeing it bounce the title bounce back and forth between these two. Uh, no thanks. I'll take a rain check on that one. I don't really care. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not. There's nothing there to to, to really care about. You know, nothing, nothing against both women, but there's just nothing there. There's, there's really not, yep. and it's a shame to say that. Well, 
part of, uh, you know, when we were having our conversation with Ashley earlier, you know, she said that if there's no emotional connection, then why, you know, you really don't care about the match. And I, I feel that's the way I feel about this because, you know, just looking at these characters, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Like these girls have switched sides so many times over the past month, Felix, that it's like, the Bellas are bad guys now, but they were good. Wait a minute, now they're bad again, and I like I don't I don't care. Like I think Nikki Bella's gonna hold the title until SummerSlam, just because I don't see any big program right now. But uh, yeah, I, I I don't really care who wins this match. <laughs> All right, we move into one that most people either they're gonna like it or they're really not, and I'm leaning towards <laughs> they're really not. And that being Ryback, the champion, to take on his, his new challenger, the big show, for the Intercontinental title. Ryback has been getting somewhat of a good push so far. The big guy against the really big guy. Ultimately, I just don't see... Okay, you know what? I'm not a fan of either one. I respect Big Show for what he's done. And yeah. the allure of just being a giant. You know, he's he's done a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but the match itself... Ryback's going to win this. I, I can't see him losing. Not 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 this soon, anyway. No. Uh, I mean, Ryback, he, he should win. He's the younger guy. He's the guy that they're really focusing on right now. I think a win over Big Show gives him a little bit of a bump. The only thing is, I wish that they didn't do the uh, shell shock spot on uh, Monday Night Raw, because that, to me, is something that you say for the big event or the pay-per-view. You know, him picking up this big 500-pound giant and slamming him down. That They should have saved that for the uh, actual show. That's true. That's very true. You know, that's another reason why, at this point, if Big Show comes in and, and knocks him out and, and gets disqualified, there, there you go. There's no match there. There's really nothing there. Eh, yeah. it is what it is. That we both go, <laughs> we're, you know, we're both going for Ryback, and we don't care about the, the Divas match. I tell, that, that should tell you something, guys. This pay per view is is not is, is is hyped up and as good as it could be, but I think and it's not the on. fault of the it's not the fault of the the roster. It's because you've got only two weeks from the last show to try to build up the next show, and it's like you can't really tell a good story in that frame of time. True, very true. But we move on to the uh, to another title match: the WWE Tag Team Titles as champions of the New Day take on their new con- number one contenders. Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. The prime time <laughs> players finally get in there and get a, get a match for the for the straps. You know, ultimately, I want to I want to go for the prime time players to come out of this as the winners. It would be a smart move, I think personally, because they've had a great momentum as they as they've been pushing their way back for a return since reuniting. But at the same time, the new day has been continuing to grow in people not liking them and and they're. Their heel characters have been beginning, been getting better. So I don't know if that Money in the Bank will be the end for them. If they yeah. do an end, if they do lose the straps, I see it likely happening at SummerSlam. Not yet. Yep. Yeah, I, I would, would agree. You? I think that I think that uh, you know the primetime players they deserve a run with the belt. But again, you know this is something that's just kind of been built up over two weeks. So there's no, like, I, I don't see them winning now. Uh, if they do win, you know, whoever wins, whoever beats New Day, it's going to happen to SummerSlam because, like you said, you know, this is a group that when they first started out, man, I hated the New Day. But once they let Kofi and Biggie Ie and, and, uh, and uh, Xavier, once they let those guys actually do what they can do best instead of trying to force them into this baby face stereotypical role and they, they allow these guys to show their personality, man. They've been one of the best heel groups on, on Raw. And and I think part of it is just that people just oh, they they love to hate and clap and new. They suck. They love to do that. But the other part is man, Kobe makes a great Kobe makes a great bad guy, like you were saying earlier, because you know, he still got that baby face smile. But now you know that he he doesn't mean anything of what he's saying. So like I, I like this group, and I think that um, you know it wouldn't surprise me if uh, they held these titles all the way to SummerSlam. There you go. And then we move into, of course, the Money in the Bank match itself. We've got Neville, 
versus Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston versus Sheamus versus Kane versus Roman Reigns. Hmm. Ideally, these guys have all come close to winning or have won it. I would actually like to see Neville come out of this the winner. Hmm. This kid's showing a lot of potential to to be a, a formidable opponent for any anybody, really. Yeah, that'd be cool, but you know it's not going to happen because this is all about your boy Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, yeah, that'd be the, the lo- logical choice as to who's going to win the the briefcase. But um, is that who you're going for? Is that would that be your choice? The Reigns is coming out at the winner. Yeah, or do you, I, what about uh, Sheamus? Yeah, I'm going to go with Reigns coming out with the briefcase, and since he's the babyface, I think he's going to announce that hey, you know. I'm going to get my moment at SummerSlam, so we we know that SummerSlam is going to be Roman versus either Brock or Roman versus uh, Rollins. But, yeah, that that would be the thing I would do is, is have Roman set up the challenge for SummerSlam. Uh, because the other guys, man, there, there's a lot of good guys in there, but mm-hmm. they have not, like Neville. I think Neville would be a fantastic choice. Kobe would be an interesting choice, but... Even Kane would be would be a funny choice, but they really haven't positioned them in that in that spot yet. And, and you know, I think Roman yeah. Reigns, as much as as much as people you know were down on Roman going into WrestleMania, like he started to pick up his game and and like uh, his power spots are still pretty cool. Like that uh the Superman punch he hit on Kofi coming off the top rope last night, like that was pretty cool. So I think Roman Reigns is 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 starting to get. He's not ready ready yet, but I think he's getting there. Okay. All right. And of course, we move into John Cena versus Kevin Owens. And this is just a regular singles match, no championships on the line. It's more of, uh, I think it's one ups, one upsmanship. And, uh, you know, obviously Kevin Owens won one. I see Cena winning one. I see a rubber match being made for SummerSlam. Yep. Or better yet, because we consider we haven't actually had a pay per view for July yet something leading into July, but I still see this feud leading in all summer. It's going to happen. I think they're going to stick with this until the end of the summer, It concluding at SummerSlam once and for all. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, what's the uh, show after this one, Felix? Is it Battleground? You know, I, for July, <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to say yeah, but the fact that they've been changing the uh, – the format, not the format, but the, uh, the the times when it comes on and so forth. You know, it, it, I don't know. It looks I, like I, yeah, I it looks like Battleground is coming that, July nineteenth. So okay, it's got straight, what I would straight trade centers in in St. Louis. But go ahead, I'm sorry. What I would have done, Felix, is I would not have had Owen Cena on this match. I, um, I mean, on this show, I think Owen probably should have just you know stepped away, or, or he should have kept coming back on Raw and rubbing the win in Cena's face, and every time Cena challenges him, he's like, nah, you know, I've got nothing left to prove, I'm not going to fight you, and then finally we get that second match at Battleground, and let's say Cena wins, and then at SummerSlam, we get the third match. I think they should have spread it out a little bit more, because as great as both of these guys have been, and their promos have been excellent, um, I think that, man, it's it's like too much too soon. Like, this is one of those views that you need to let breathe for a little bit. Yeah, no doubt about it. But I got to call. I got to go with Cena winning it uh, Sunday night for sure. Um, we move into the World Heavyweight Title match, which is a la- ladder match, which would be pretty entertaining because these two have been very entertaining together. Yep. I just don't see Dean winning the title. Not yet. Not right now. You know, I think Seth will finally get his title back and move on to the next challenger, which. Could likely be one of the Money in the Bank guys. You know, could they cash in the same night after Rollins wins? It's been done. It could happen again. I mean, I think Rollins is going to win. I think Seth has been a nice little, or Dean, excuse me, Dean Ambrose has been a nice little uh, placeholder while we're yep. waiting for Brock. Um, I think that it. I think that if anybody else besides Roman were going to win Money in the Bank, we might get that challenge on the same show. But I think he's going to do the babyface thing of announcing ahead of time. 
Um, so I think that Seth is going to hold this title. And then here's, here's my prediction. I think at Battleground, because they're, they're going to need something to pop up that July show, I say at Battleground we might get Brock and Seth. That could very well happen. I and still I believe that Brock, Brock has a score to settle with him anyway. Yeah, and I think Brock wins, and then at SummerSlam we get Brock and Roman, and then that's when Roman ultimately wins the title. That would be pretty cool, actually. I mean, Roman still feel I, I, most people feel that Roman got the, got the shaft in that match. I really believe that the higher ups in WWE just didn't feel like he had enough momentum to actually be the uh, the champ. But you know, I think going to the second biggest pay per view of the year it would be it would be an ideal way to do it. Yeah. But I guess we'll have to tune what in this thought, Sunday night uh, on the WWE Network to find out. Real quick, Felix, what have you thought? Because I know a lot of people complained on a Monday night that you had uh, J and J Security beat the champion. I didn't I didn't think it was that bad. But what has been your thoughts of uh, Seth Rollins' title run so far? Because I think Rollins is a talented performer, but this hadn't been the best championship run, in my opinion. Well, you know, it started off pretty strong because he was, he was, it, was, it was a different title holder. It was not the usual typical Cena, Orton, Sheamus, uh, typical people that have held the title. So yep. as much as I didn't like it and I love to give Austin a hard time about it, I, you know, I actually think that he was a, great, he was a logical choice to go with. For, but nobody, although nobody saw it coming. As far as his reign as champion, it, like I said, it started off strong, and it just seemed like it kept going from one way, one, I don't know, one way or another. It just kept going every which way. It just kind of cause it seems like it was just too much because you got J&J security, you got issues with Kane, you got issues with Mommy and Daddy, you know. Yeah. He hasn't really been out there really showcasing his actual talents, which – I mean, I get that they're making him a, a heel champion and so forth, and one of those ones where, you know, they could talk big, but when it comes right down to it, they need their entourage with them to get him over. And I, I don't really want – I don't think he should be that way. I really think he should be out there showcasing his talent. I mean, he, he's just as talented as anybody else on that roster, and therefore he can show – and he shows it. So in putting in high-profile matches, he, he does he does incredible. But as far as the title reign – in his reign as champion, it could be better. And that's why I think maybe losing the title to Brock or even the Roman would be a good thing for him because then you're going to have that story where he looks back at the authority and he's like, you know what, all this was a waste and I'm tired of being in Triple H's shadow and maybe we finally get that Rollins face turn and we, we get the uh, Triple H Rollins feud that will go through the rest of the year. Very true. You know, there was a spot on Monday Night Raw that people that had people talking, and that was of course the reunion. Not necessarily the reunion itself, but the the, the tag team match between the, the Wyatts and the Los Los Matadores. They had uh, done the 3D, and you know that caught the ire of of, of the Dudley Boys. Hmm. And Bully hmm. made the challenge to not only WWE brass, but to the to, to the tag team themselves. You know that this would be an ideal match for a WrestleMania, I think. Bring back the legendary tag team of the the Dudley Boys to to school the the new school boys on how to do the proper 3D. Dudley's got yeah, in there with beat the hell out of just about every tag team there had been. That would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Just to uh, as a as a final kind of farewell for the Dudleys uh, before they uh, get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, which I'm sure they will in the future, but. Uh, also, as a way to give Wyatt and uh, not Wyatt uh, Harper and Rowan something to do, because yeah, they reunited, but I, I mean, are they really doing anything you know in important right now? Are they doing anything to stand out right now? True. But yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting coming off of Raw that the, the Dudley Boys were and those dudes. Oh my God, I know I talked about this at WrestleMania. But Bum and Devon are gigantic people. Oh, my God, I feel like a dwarf around them. I, I actually, uh, when I posted, I had seen him at WrestleCon. But Bully's no joke. That dude is not, he's not fat. That dude is buff. 
Yeah, they're, they're still in really good shape. Like, the the shape they were in this last TNA run was probably the best shape of their lives. And I saw a uh, sure. promo I saw a promo from a month or so ago that uh, Devon had cut with his sons, who are now wrestlers. And, and he's like, yeah, this, this, this dude's still in shape. He can still cut a good promo. So, yeah, I think they, they could get one last run in the WWE. For sure. You know, with that, you know, let's 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 talk about upcoming shows that we got coming up. As before, we go ahead and bring this to a close. I know with our show, as I mentioned, next Tuesday we've got Kenny Resnick coming to the show. We've got Thursday. You know, it's kind of hard to top an all-star cast that we had last last Thursday. So many incredible people to talk to, great stories, old friends reminiscing, talking about the charity event coming up. That's last Thursday that they're going to have for June 13th. Uh, I actually have been in contact with the promoter of the event, and we will look to maybe help promote their show in the future. So you never know who might be popping up on Pipe Bomb Radio in the future. If it's anybody with the likes of a million-dollar man, maybe Jake the Snake Roberts, or let us, dare I say, Lita, or even Kurt Angle. Stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. But, yes, as far as Thursdays go, I don't really know what they can do to top it. But I know once we know, you guys will know. And we will let you, you know, you guys will be in for another ride like we were last week. Nate, what you got coming up on your on your show, man? I I, I got to ask the same thing. How can you top what you done last week? Because you guys did different. You guys had a hell of a show last week. You know, uh, much like Pipe Bomb, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, I don't try to top what I did last week. I just keep trying to do the best I can because I know that each week, you know, we're gonna put on a good show for the people. They're gonna enjoy sure. it. They're gonna love it. So, like I said, man, this week. We got a great show uh, in store for you on Friday featuring uh, JTG, One Half of Crime Time, talking about his book, Damn, Why Did I Write This Book, which is just <laughs> one of the if, – if you haven't got it, it's, it's only like uh, three bucks on uh, if you buy it on the e-books. And it's, it's a quick read. It's like 65, 66 pages, and he tells you some crazy – backstage stories from his time in the WWE, and, and it's a really cool read. So we'll have a JTG uh, interview up as well as talking about the NBA Finals and some other great things in the world of sports. So you can find Kings of Sport on iTunes. You can find them on Stitcher. And you can find us on Twitter at KOS underscore POD, uh, Cospod on Twitter. And also, as Felix mentioned earlier, uh, you can check out my interview with Kenny King uh, from TNA talking about Destination X. Uh, and that's up at uh, Live Audio Wrestling uh, right now. Awesome. You know, i got to ask, though, how has, has Impact Wrestling been doing? I mean, they they seem to have an, a, 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 a clue as far as, you know, pushing the younger talents now that the older talents have pretty much all gone. But I also heard a rumor, and maybe I'm not sure if you heard it or not, but TNA had offered the opportunity to have uh, AJ Styles be inducted into their Hall of Fame and come back and compete for one match, but he turned him down. But yeah, WWE yeah, is also interested in him as well. Yep, that that was true. And uh, apparently from what AJ was saying, you know, he respectfully declined just because it's like he's, his obligations are to New Japan first and then to Ring of Honor in, in terms of America. So Plus, I think there's probably still some bad blood between him and Dixie. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it's a shame. Uh, but yeah, TNA Impact Wrestling has been pr- a pretty good show. It's been pretty solid. Uh, there was a crazy angle this past week where uh, James Storm pushed Mickey James onto a train track. <laughs> I saw <laughs> that is, video. I'm like, what the hell's crazy. going on here? Did, uh, yeah, and it, the it transition James crazy. Storm has made in this in this new psychotic type character that he's got has been incredible. Yeah. But uh, this week is uh, Destination X, so it should be good. You know, a lot of X Division action. And then uh, Kurt Angle versus uh, Rockstar Spud and Austin Aries. So, I mean, anytime you get Angle and Aries in a ring, it's going to be a good match. So uh, if you haven't checked out TNA lately, uh, check it out. Because it, it's even though the, the business of TNA and the Destination America deal is probably crazy and who knows if they'll be around in September. Like, the actual TV show is pretty solid. Okay. There you have it, folks. And I think with that, we'll go ahead and bring the show to a close this week. We want to thank our guest, Miss Ashley America, for joining us for a great conversation. We look forward to having her back again in the future. 
And we invite you to join us next week for Kenny Resnick. And as far as our shows go, oh, you know what? That reminded me of one other topic that I wanted to bring up that came to my attention just recently. Two topics, actually. Number one, we just found out recently that a former guest of ours, the one and only WWE Hall of Famer Black Jack Mulligan, has had has been having a very rough time in his health. His health has really been decreasing, and, and it's just not been good. And for a man who gave so much to the wrestling business, gave so much of himself to, 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 to wrestling, and now really having to resort to asking for help because he's not getting any, and resorted, he's, re, he's down to, he's, he's in a wheelchair for Christ's sake. You know, the man can't get around very much. He needs, he's, he's, he's in bad health. He needs help. We've posted a link on our Pipe Bomb Radio uh, Facebook page of a GoFundMe account. Whatever you guys can do to donate to help him out, Blackjack needs us. He's been incredible to us every time he's come on. You know, nothing but great story, you know, great, one, one great story after another, very positive outlook on life. You know, so proud of his grandsons, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt and, and uh, Bo Dallas. Proud of his son, Barry. His son-in-law, IRS, Mike Rotundo. You know, just just an incredible man. You know, you, you, you really couldn't ask for a better man. And just in the case where he, he needs help, give, give, give donate what you can, folks. That's all he asks, you know. What what else can we do is just try to help him out. Do it with $5, $10, 50 100 whatever you can do. Check it out. It's on our Facebook page. And the other one that caught my interest, that caught my eye, was that a an, an actual somebody who I consider to be a very very good friend of mine, former WWE Intercontinental Champion, China. Looks like she is going to be making her return to the states. I seen she, there is a Kickstarter started for her, and the reason this is being brought up is because it's for a documentary as she tries to re- reclaim her life. Because after her departure from WWE being as bad as it was, she's not the same person she was then. She's really reconstructed her life and made it for the better, living out in Japan for over three and a half years. She's returning to the States this summer, and she's looking to film her documentary and meet with some old friends and some wrestling fans and just wants to get back out there and just, just get back to living a normal life. You know, will she ever wrestle again? That remains to be seen. But it's not one of her number one priorities. She'll always be thankful for what WWE did for her. But to have to keep, you know, being reminded of, you know, the, the dark times in her life, she's ready to move on. And I applaud her, and I congratulate her, and I wish her the very best of luck. Uh, if you wanted to check out the uh, the Kickstarter, I would say... Keep an eye out on her on her Facebook page. It's China JL for a link. I'm sure a link will be posted soon, but I just happened to come across it. So keep an eye out. Donate what you can. There's some interesting prizes prizes where you actually could meet China in person, have a phone call with her, have her give you a shout out, just to name a few things. But um, two great causes for two great people. Very very awesome, wonderful people. Donate what you can, folks. And on that note, on behalf of Nate and myself for Pipe Bomb Radio this week, we thank you guys for joining us, and we invite you back with us next week. And I conclude, like I always do, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night, Nate. I'll be talking to you here in just a moment. I'm never gonna be done, lean on in. Now welcome to the queen, the queen dog, where the king's bow down.